Join us every Wednesday at 8.30 to listen to Game Shout at the Movies, only on Game Shout Radio. Game Shout Radio is property of Game Shout, a company of Red Planet LLC. All rights reserved. Executive producer, Andy Hodges. For live broadcast booking information, syndication, or advertising, email info at gameshot.com. All comments expressed on the show are not necessarily those of Game Shot, Red Planet LLC, its advertisers, guests, or syndication affiliates. All music is licensed by ASCAP and BMI. Recordings of this broadcast prohibited without prior written consent. Game Shout Radio. The show is brought to you by ATI. Get your new X800 Radeon card today. And BFG Servers. For game server rentals, visit BFGServers.com. BFG Servers, where size does matter. Game Shout Radio, the number one talk game station in the world. And hey, welcome back to Game Shout. We are Game Shout Radio, broadcasting worldwide via the internet as well as uh, FM radio syndication and satellite radio coming soon. Uh, my name is Andy Hodges. We got Captain Maverick, Jadri, yeah. Sexy Josh, Trick Neil, Soul Rift, Vicious, and Tina are all here tonight. And this is our Thursday night. Uh, broadcast tonight, of course, wacky news from around the world. We've got the uh, Game Shout Roundtable. You don't want to miss this one. It's the Halo 2 and Half Life 2. One year later, what do you think now? That should be an interesting roundtable. That's coming up uh, at 8:30. Uh, console game reviews. The Gamepad Gamers, uh, hosted by Sexy Josh. All kinds of uh, reviews and previews. Uh, for that, and then we got the soundboard with Trick Neil and Sexy Josh bringing you all the all the latest in music news from around the world. And uh, speaking of that, don't forget about Control Alt Rock. Yeah, we really do have it on Mondays. We just didn't have it last Monday, and we didn't have it the Monday before that either. A different problem uh, had happened, but. Uh, we will have Control Alt Rock this Monday at three o'clock p.m. Eastern. Is is that right, Josh? Completely right. Okay. Yes. Okay, so that's uh, this coming up uh, Monday, uh, three p.m. Eastern. You don't want to miss it. It's uh, Big alternative shows. music. Celebrity awesome interviews, stuff. everything. Oh yeah, all kinds of lots of fun. All kinds of good midgets. stuff. Rock and French roll. toast. Yeah. Oh yeah. People. Naked midgets. We just we just get all crazy and stuff and just start rocking out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's he's jamming out and all of a sudden you hear this ping. Uh, Mike Tyson's in trouble again. Yeah, he was in a nightclub scuffle with a camera guy. Yep, he sure was. Uh, but he didn't bite the guy's ear off. That's as of the last report. Uh, everything looked like uh, it was Tyson's fault up until the camera guy said that that Mike Tyson had punched him. And the police could not find any bruising or any... Uh, marks on the guy. <laughs> uh, I think Tyson lucked out. <laughs> I, I think that if Tyson punches somebody, he's going to leave a mark. Guaranteed. Yeah, uh, the police uh, had told the reporter, go to the hospital and, and uh, uh, have yourself uh, inspected. Uh, the reporter declined to do that, so... Uh, they did, they did let Mike Tyson out, and um, I don't know what they're. This this all happened in Brazil, by the way. I tell you, he yeah, can't even yeah. go anywhere in the world without can't getting in Everybody some kind of trouble. Yeah, and what's with the tattoo on his face? But well, what's that all about? Oh, yeah, that's his new thing. I'm, I'm telling you, he had that for the last fight, and it looks sad then. It looks sad now. 
I just don't understand that. I can see, you know, people having tattoos, but right on your face. I mean. <laughs> yeah, well, if I'm going to have a tattoo on my face, I have a tattoo on my face, and you get my, I, I kick your ass. Uh, Firefox turns one today. Yeah. Happy birthday Let's throw a party. to you. Uh, they're celebrating with uh, over a hundred million downloads, and according to market share overall. Now these statistics are overall market share. They're not per website. Well, they're they're all the websites, but they're calculating the full market share. And I say that because some sites show different. Like our site shows that uh, Firefox is in the 30 percent range. Uh, but the overall market share of Firefox, uh, they claim it's 11.5 percent. I mean that that's unreal. Wow. That for one year, that's one amazing. year they one year, yeah, yeah. That that is that's re absolutely remarkable. One year later, you know, it it's uh, and of course Microsoft was promising better security on the next uh, release of Internet Explorer version 7 but uh, Firefox beat them to it I mean they've, they've had that thing a year ago so and when is that IE 7 supposed to come out I thought it was last July <laughs> <laughs> come on let's not tick off Mr. Gates you know <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll let him advertise here we don't want to tick him off <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something very embarrassing with Gates happened uh, yesterday. A, a, a leaked oh, no. memo was sent out. Yeah. Somebody at Microsoft, uh, executive, some executive, because the e the email memo was only sent to executives at Microsoft. Well, somehow this memo got leaked out to the press, and uh, my uh, Bill Gates is, you know. Uh, almost pleading and and about their next step uh <laughs> what they need to do to beat yeah. google and and he even admits in the uh memo that google has beat microsoft in so many areas uh it's a sad memo but uh yeah uh he says to take the uh uh the new technologies just like they took it in 1995 the internet tidal wave as he called it he wants to pursue the business uh, web-based uh, applications with Microsoft. I don't know why they weren't doing that in the first place, to be honest with you. You know, if they've got up, you know, they've got updates, so and that's web-based. I just don't understand uh, that. Who's that other company that? Uh, has a web-based application. They've had it for five years now on the web. Uh, it's open something. It's open office. Is that what it is? I think that's what it is. Off OpenOffice.org. It's basically the uh, simulation of Microsoft Office with uh, open source content. Or it's built on open source uh, technology, so it's free to anyone. See that right there is pretty cool, but. Uh, yeah, I I don't know what the next step is uh, is for Microsoft, but it, as far as the internet and web-based applications, Google has it, and now Yahoo is starting something uh, of their own. Amazing stuff. Uh, Nintendo Revolution has announced uh, today. They were on CNN Money Market Watch. Uh, <laughs> Uh, they don't care about graphics. Uh, they are cutting costs for the Nintendo Revolution console. I don't understand this. Uh, they claim that uh, uh, a video gamer, uh, you know, your average video gamer doesn't care about uh, fancy graphics. They just want to enjoy the game. Some parts of that I, I, I agree with, but how in the world are they going to... Uh, release a third generation console up against the Xbox 360 and all the uh, tools that PlayStation 3 has. Uh, Nintendo says that their niche in the market is price. They are going to be cheaper. 
I think Nintendo's going gimmicky. Uh, I mean, with their new controller that looks like a TV remote controller and you can wave it around and all that, I, I can see why they're giving up uh, the graphics in, in favor of weird gimmicky stuff, you know? Yeah, I mean, there's 2D games that are just as pop popular among people, but, uh, you know, they're, they're, you know, N Nintendo has been talking about revolutionizing uh, gameplay, and then all of a sudden today they announced that they're, they're going to cut corners on graphics. That could be a I just don't, I just don't see that being very revolutionary, if you know what I mean. Oh, they're also... Uh, Xbox 360 and the PS3 are, are gearing more towards the HDD uh, uh, television, uh, the high definition television that is. So, I don't know. It's hard to say where where this uh, technology is going, but Microsoft knows where it's going, and so does Sony. So uh, I don't know. Big, uh, I, I see this. If it's all true. Uh, what N Nintendo said today, it, it's kind of a disappointment. Some people yeah, like their uh, revolutionary controllers, some don't. Should be, uh, well, interesting to see how uh, it all shakes out. And Nintendo has uh, announced like two days ago they, were, they are not going to release any kind of uh, technical docs or papers or anything about the revolution. Everything's been kept quiet. So we don't even know the specs of this unit quite yet. So uh, I guess when we get towards launch date, whenever that is, because they've been hush-hush about that too, uh, we'll know more information. Um, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back with Captain Maverick and the Wacky News right after this. Millions of people love Newegg.com. Go on that website and check it out. You'll see what I'm talking about. There's a whole testimonial page. People are using the L word when it comes to Newegg.com. They say love. I love Newegg.com. How is Newegg.com earning this kind of devotion? Well, they sell computers, components, and electronics. That's true. But it's the great price, it's the huge selection, it's the fair shipping, and it's because the customer service is so great. They actually care about your satisfaction. They have video cards, routers, wireless networking equipment, DVD players, hard drives, software, digital cameras, and unbelievable fair shipping. So, I can't sing the praises of Newegg.com enough, and neither can anyone else. So whether you need a motherboard or the mother of all TVs, go to Newegg.com. You'll see what their millions of happy customers are raving about. Once you know, Newegg.com. Welcome back to Game Shop Radio. This is Captain Maverick, the host of the wacky news from around the world. We got a lot of good stuff in the news tonight, guys. I'm telling you, more and more... More and more weird stuff going on, and, and there's just no accounting for taste. Here's an example. Out of London, a tooth believed to have been pulled from Napoleon's mouth was sold on Thursday at auction in London for $22,600. A tooth. I mean, talk about a tooth fairy. $22,600. The tooth is part of a small collection of Napoleon Bonaparte's items at sale. It was bought by a private collector from England who asked to remain anonymous. Um, basically, the previous owner died recently, and the tooth came with papers tracing it back to Napoleon's physician, uh, Barry O'Mara, who apparently extracted it from the former French emperor's mouth in 1817 during Napoleon's exile on the British island of St. Helena in, south of, in the South Atlantic. And Napoleon died on the island four years later. Now, O'Meara passed the tooth on to General uh, Masseroni. Uh, let's see, he was the aide to the King of Naples who married to Napoleon's youngest sister, Caroline, uh, the last owner to acquire the tooth from uh, uh, Masseroni's great-great-granddaughter was Cecilia White in 1956. 
and it's an upper right canine tooth. It was worn, shows signs of decay in the center. It still has the root attached to it. <laughs> now, other items up for sale include a marble bust of Napoleon, an ivory figurine, painted miniatures, engravings, and books. Now, the whole collection, it sold for more than $38,000. You can see the prize of the, the, the whole ball there was that tooth for twenty-two six. How many of you guys would plop down twenty-two six for Napoleon's tooth? I mean, really, how many of you guys would do that? I would. I like teeth. You would. You like teeth. Okay, well, let me mark down vicious Japanese ancient Japanese porn and teeth. <laughs> I wouldn't put that much down for <laughs> pornography. I mean, teeth are just so much better. They're shiny. Well, not this one. It's all brown and nasty and disgusting, and it really looks gross. I just, you know, no accounting for that. But, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, I didn't, mm -mm, nope. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, on November 10th, 1775, the Second Continental Congress resolved to raise two battalions of Continental Marines, marking the birth of our United States Marine Corps. As Major General Lejeune's message reminds us, the ensuing generations of Marines would come significantly that they were the highest in warfighting excellence, military virtue. Each November, as the Marines worldwide celebrate the birth of our Corps, we pay tribute to a long line of soldiers of the sea and the illustrious legacy handed down to us. Hoorah! Semper Fi, Marines! Happy birthday. Sorry, guys. I just, I had to, you know. Hey, Warhammer. Yeah. Semper Fi, Warhammer. And, uh, oh, by the way, Ben, Semper Fi to you too, bud. He's the one that's going to let me use the PS2. Shh. All right. Okay. Okay. We broke the PS2 in the stu in the station here, and he's I'm having to borrow one from a friend. So I didn't want to tell you, Andy, but it happened. Sorry. Well, an Iowa woman has uh, well found a little surprise in her coffee this morning. Marjorie Morris just wanted to pour a coffee into the canister. What she found in the package of freeze-dried coffee left her a little shell-shocked, so to speak. Morris, she's 77, of Ainsworth uh, in Iowa, she found a dead baby turtle in the two-pound package of Folgers coffee. thought that was kind of interesting. She thought it was a toy at first. Uh, it's uh, a responsibility of the company to check the shipments a little bit closer, she thinks, and uh, this could have been much more serious. Like she could have cooked it and drunk the uh, turtle-tainted coffee. Well, Morris said she doesn't plan to file any lawsuit or anything like that. She said a customer service representative at the company dismissed the find and explained that because many Folgers plants are based in New Orleans, the turtle might have ended up in the coffee as a result of Hurricane Katrina. That sounds like a feasible explanation. Well, a, spokesman for, a spokesperson for Procter & Gamble, Suzanne Dussing, uh, said that the company owns the the Folgers brand. She said it's too early to say how the turtle really ended up in there. She said she wasn't aware that of of any other similar incident and that Morris' discovery would definitely be investigated. Morris, who has kept the turtle, said she would continue to drink coffee, but that now she's a mindful consumer. I mean, things could have been much worse, she said. She said it could have been a snake. <laughs> the best part of waking up is a dead baby turtle in your cup. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it works. That works. Nice work. All right. All right. This this is kind of weird, and, and I guess you could kind of call it wacky. Um, I don't know. You decide. But, uh... A man who chopped off a 17-year-old boy's head with a tomahawk and later used it as if it were a bowling ball was in court in Brisbane. Christopher Clark Jones told police that James Patrick Rohan first stomped and then stabbed the homeless teenager. 
See, Mr. Jones, he told detectives that the three were mates, and they had been at Rohan's home having a drink when an argument erupted. And Rohan uh, and Morgan, uh, Morgan J. Shepard, had fallen on the ground, and Rohan, well, had stomped heavily on this teenager's head. Now, Shepard was, was bleeding and choking when Rohan ran to get a knife and began stabbing Shepard before chopping off his head with a tomahawk. The next day, they dug a grave for the boy, and uh, Mr. Rohan ended up playing a game of bowling with the kid's head as if it were a bowling ball. I'd say that's just a little off. And if that's not wacky, I don't know what is. Okay, how about this? The British Heart Foundation is set to launch its Food for Thought campaign, which is going to feature posters showing images such as burger rolls filled with bone and gristle and tissue in an effort to fight off child obesity. Now, see, the campaign was considered following a revealing survey that showed some 36% of children aged between 8 and 14 years old in the United Kingdom did not know that chips were actually made from potatoes. Oh well, yeah. Well, the Food for Thought campaign will also include posters showing the real ingredients of hot dogs and chicken nuggets, as well as burgers. Oh, you guys are going to traumatize these kids. They said that they want kids to, well, get in touch with even the most basic foods, like rat hair. Basic foods, rat hair, you know, hot dogs, yeah. That's my kind of place. All right, listen. Um, I'm telling. I'm telling you, this woman has tried and tried and tried, but persistence finally pays off. Vanetta Crabtree. She's 50 of Cowley, Oxford, and she is pleased to announce that she has finally passed her driving exam, enabling her to get behind the wheel of her first car, a second-hand uh, 980cc Suzuki Alto yesterday. Yep, Benita, she took 33 years to pass her driving test after failing 40 previous driving exams. 33 years she's been trying to pass the driver's test, and she finally passes. Now my question is, they're really going to let her get behind the wheel of a car? <sighs> well, Benita, she told reporters after receiving the news, It's fantastic! I'm so very pleased! Crash! No. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Triumph International in Japan has introduced a new bra that you can put into the microwave. It's pads with eco-friendly reusable gel that can heat up with hot water and stay warm for the winter. What a great idea. I think I'm going to get one for me. Yeah, the bra comes with a matching pair of shorts that helps prevent global warming. Japan is also asking uh, people this year to set their thermostat down to 20 degrees Celsius to save energy. What is that in uh, Fahrenheit, uh, my Canadian friends? I think it was 72. 20 degrees Celsius is 72 Fahrenheit? Dang, that could be I off. keep mine I down know. at 69 Fahrenheit. But anyhow, the Prime Minister uh, of Japan helped lower air conditioning use this summer and greenhouse gas emissions, saving enough energy to supply 240,000 homes for a month. At least that's what they plan with uh, the use of these lovely little warm bras and panties. Hey, look. If you gotta stick your your panties and bra into a microwave to warm them up, I'm sorry. It's it's gonna use just as much energy as if you're using the heat. Okay? It's it's gonna. I swear it will. All right. Oh gosh. You know, I I just I just don't know what else to do. Um, this this uh, you know I, I I bust my butt and bust my butt. Now nah, let's. Yeah, let's do it. Bust my butt and bust my butt out there in the in the woods trying to get these deer, but what happens? Yeah, yep, yeah, they still get in these deer car accidents. 
Well, out in Black Hawk, California, uh, motorist Robert Brooks thought he hit a deer. That is, until he got out of his car and the deer hit him. Let me explain. Brooks stopped his car Tuesday evening along Rural Road 35 miles east of San Francisco to check for damage from the collision. Nothing. No damage. No sign of the deer. Then he sees headlights from a car coming in the other direction. And it struck the deer, propelling it airborne into Brooks, breaking his right ankle. <laughs> you talk about being in the wrong place at the wrong time, okay? By the way, the deer was pronounced dead at the scene, and authorities are still looking for the driver of the second vehicle. Deer was pronounced dead. Yeah. Okay. Be that way. You guys are just just absolutely too quiet today. I'm just going to have to wake you up. Now that you've seen Pokemon the movie, you've got to get Pokemon action figures. Pokemon underwear. Pokemon ripped condom. The Pikachu double-headed vibrator. Inflatable Pokemon with sense of loop. Pokemon nipple clamps. Glow in the dark. Pokemon playtime lubricant. Pokemon breast enlargement kit. The handheld Pokemon vacuum sock. And the Pokemon four-headed throbbing dildo. Available in sex shops everywhere. Pokemon. I love glow-in-the-dark playtime lubricant. <laughs> yeah, I knew you would. <laughs> Hi, <I'm> Pokemon! <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, man, I tell you, I'm just, uh, it's just one, been one of, those, uh, one of those weeks, and we got uh, just so much news and not enough time our last story of the night. I, I, I don't know what to make of this. Des Moines, Iowa. A judge ruled that a former security guard who was fired for seeing ghosts cannot be denied unemployment benefits. Yeah, according to the court... <laughs> fired yeah. for seeing ghosts? Yeah, and he can't be denied unemployment benefits for being fired for seeing ghosts. See. Okay, the former guard's uh, uh, allegation, basically it doesn't uh, constitute misconduct is what they said. Now the issue started back in September 11th when, when Wade Gallegos, he alerted his supervisor at a neighborhood patrol of Urbandale that ghosts were haunting a neighborhood he was guarding. Now the supervisor arrives at the scene where Gallegos showed him where the ghosts were still apparently standing. The supervisor claimed he saw nothing and fired Gallegos five hours later. Now, the company found no signs of drug use or alcohol. The neighborhood patrol challenged Gallegos' application for unemployment benefits, arguing that he was guilty of misconduct. Well, the judge said, quote, Such beliefs do render the claimant unfit to act as a security guard, but the employer cannot have security guards who see ghosts and apparitions before them in, uh, and inform the employer, and then the employer sends out patrol cars. However, the judge also ruled that seeing ghosts is not any type of misconduct and cannot disqualify Gallegos from receiving benefits. This is Game Shop Radio, the number one talk game station in the world. Visit GameShop.com for more info. Game Shop. Game Shop. Well, you've made a smart